on my way to work. Let's go over what's happened since the last video. Okay, so I've gone up to the work site and I've marked out the basic footprint of the building. Had to do it two or three times to get it right. Main thing is that it's looking straight out of the lake. I've actually done two versions here, one with a yellow string and one with a red string, which probably doesn't show up on the camera. The red one is based on a four meter square and the yellow one is based on a five meter square and the customer's coming up to have a look so i get some input from him and we have to make this final decision are we basing it on a four meter square or a five meter square the five meter footprint I have to admit it looks huge actually the four meter one isn't small either but anyway these are the two options we've got at the moment. So I'll give the customer a ring, get him up here, and we'll see what he says. So we settled on the four by four, and knowing that I was able to then mark out that template on the floor and bring in those half logs that I split in the previous video. I'll put a link up here to the previous video. So when I cut this first log in half, as you maybe saw in the video, if I've already put that part in, I guess I have, as I cut it, it opened up. There were some stresses in the wood. So this half is actually bowed a little this way. So what I did was I just drew a line level with the floor along the log and now I'm just going to take that piece off. I'm going to use this, this thing again. And I'll take this opportunity for a tool tip with the chainsaws and with this one, which is basically a chainsaw. When you're starting for the first time in the day, then what you don't want to do is start it and straight away start working at high revs. It puts a strain on the, on the motor. Now my other, my main chainsaw, which you may have seen, as I said, that's a 10 year old machine. It works perfectly. And part of the reason is because of these kind of tool tips. It's kind of saw care, care for your chainsaw. What to do on the first start of the day is to actually start the machine and then just let it run and warm up before you start with the high revs. It extends the life of the saw considerably. Also, if you're working the saw really hard and then you stop, the worst thing you can do, which I see all the time on videos, high revs and then straight, just turn it off and put the saw to the side. You're on high revs, you finish, it, finish what you're doing, put the saw to the side, leave it running for a little while so it can calm down, cool down a bit before switching it off. Those two things alone will extend the life of your chainsaw. So I'll get this, this done.
what I'm doing now. This is the effectively the well, first layer of logs on the in-between walls. And as you see, these are big logs. This is about just over 30 centimetres in diameter. And normally what you do is you sink down by about half the thickness of the log, which would be 15 centimetres, obviously. But I'm not going to do that. I chose these logs, which are technically too big, to go on these sides because I'm also going to take some off of the bottom of the logs so there's a wider area of logs sitting on the, on the wall. And when I say the wall, what I mean is the stone foundation that we're building. In fact, I'll show you the stones. So I hope I'm not getting too much wind noise here. But just over here are the stones. He's pulled them all out of the pile, laid them out. These are the stones that are going to go up to the site to be the base for our building. So these are going to sit on top of the stones and it's 30 centimetres thick. I'm going to drop it by 20 centimetres, which means a good slice is going to come off the bottom and we have a nice wide base sitting on top of those stones. It's going to leave 10 centimetres sitting up above the, the half logs, which is a nice size because most of the other logs are a little over 20 centimetres. So when I sink those down, then they will be back to about half the log coming off. So I'll draw these logs. I'll go into the drawing a little bit later on how to do it. I'll go ahead and draw these and so I can get them cut. So it's time to scribe a log. Now the reason it's called scribing is it used to be done with log scribers like this. So these points would actually just scratch the lines onto the logs, scribe the lines on. Now we're using things like this. So it's very adjustable and at the back here it has two levels so that you can keep this absolutely at the right angle. So we know that I'm gonna I want to drop the log by 20 centimeters so all I would do is set this to 20 centimeters and then I would set this part up and I'll show you how to do that on the next log. Right now I'm going to draw that base log and get it put in position.
so I got those first two logs on. I didn't film very much of it. To be honest, it took me both of those logs to get back into the, back into the way of doing things. But I will lay out all the really, really basic stuff on how to, how to do all these things. Now, I'm gonna have the log coming on here and the basics of selecting that log are looking at how much of a height difference there is here. So we're at about 11 centimeters. It was expecting about 10. I've already checked the other end, it is at 10. And what you usually try and do is take double that height difference plus a little bit, plus an extra couple of centimeters. So if we're around about 10, we're looking for 22, 23 centimeter thick log. Um, that's the basis of the size selection. There's other stuff which way around it's going to go. We'll get to that. But I'll go pick out a log that's suitable. Okay, so let's get back to setting up the log scriber. What you're going to need to do is find some place which is perfectly vertical. Now, it would be really good if that place is made of wood, but we can fix that hurdle, no problem at all. point is vertical this way what I'll then do is with a knife draw a vertical line this way so absolutely perfectly vertical Now we've got a perfectly vertical groove. What I then do is I take the this end of the scriber, locate it on the groove and press it in. That's now going to be our reference point. So I'll go find out how much we're going to drop this log and I'll explain how you figure that out on one of the next logs. But then I'll show you how to set up the, the log scriber. I keep forget, nearly forgetting the name because here it's actually called something different. It's called a harpy, but log scriber. Okay, I'll go figure out how much to drop that log. Okay, so I've got the height that I want to drop this log by. I'll just actually mark the, that indentation. So I can locate that nicely there. and the pencil will locate itself in that groove and keep it. We now know that these two points are perfectly above each other. Now these levels at the back then just need to be set. The horizontal one is actually already good. So I'll just set the vertical. Just check it one more time. That looks good. Okay, let's go to the log.